Okay, so here are some of the finer details about how I put the thing together. I originally made three sheets, like so. Um, I then marked them out, I cut the basic holes, which uh, they all, all three had in common. And so this is actually going to be a three layer thing. The idea was, is that I was going to have uh, the two outside sheets, and then I was going to have a middle one in, the, in here to protect all the circuitry and all that type of stuff. Uh, I ended up not using that, and that was partly so I could get the thickness down a little bit, um, although I actually have roughly that gap in there at the moment anyway. Um, but it's also just to make it a bit lighter and cut down the amount of time of actually building things, because it takes an age to uh, work with all of this when you, when you don't have the right tools. The touch panel is just a very basic one off eBay, it's a 7 inch, um, I'm going to put a link up to that on uh, funnyhacks.com, uh, you can see here uh, that's the controller for it and I've actually shortened this wire a whole lot so that it will, uh, I don't have excessive amounts of cable in there. So then also on the same note, the cable that goes between this board and the USB controller, that's quite heavy and uh, thick. So I don't want to be winding all of that up around in here as well. So there I have put, uh, you may or may not be able to see it, but I've got some ribbon cable which is uh, directly going from one end to the other. Then we get over to this cable, and this one here is, once again, a USB cable. It's a small uh, end of a USB cable, and it's still massive compared to all the other stuff I'm doing. Uh, I did want to have that there, so then I can separate the two halves very easily. It's just simply a matter of unplug that, and then it's fully detached. Because I have done things like this in the past where I've had wires going in between, and it's a nightmare to do maintenance on. Um, so yeah, unplug that, and you can take it away. But then that meant I'd also have a really long cable bouncing around. So that cable there, uh, I've only kept about that sort of length, and I've soldered it directly onto the joint, and that's why I have some tape here over the top of the USB port, because I haven't actually removed that USB port here. The reason why I haven't removed it yet is I still haven't fully decided if I am going to sacrifice that one permanently or not, or whether I want to keep it on there. Getting this cable a whole lot shorter will also help me get this thing more compact as well, because that's one of the main things which is actually keeping it quite bulky, is the amount of distance that's in between this bottom layer and this top layer. You'll see the LEDs. Now that one there is siphoning a little bit of power from this USB port. And then this one here is taking power directly from the USB hub, which is coming from this port here. And I'm also powering the touch screen touch panel off that as well. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about the amount of power I'm drawing from that because I'm actually drawing it from a non-USB line. The idea is that when I turn it off, um, so I'm just putting it into standby here, and you'll see that this all turns off. Now if I had it left on the USB ports, I did actually test this, I read it everywhere but I wanted to test it myself. If I leave those LEDs being powered off the USB ports, then they stay powered on even when the thing's on standby. And it was very likely to go through power very quickly. I did leave it for a little while, but um, I had no intention of leaving it that way, so I didn't bother testing what its battery life was like. Another thing a lot of people have asked me is, how did I get to the touch screen? It is simply the original LCD screen from the netbook, and I've put a touch panel in front of that. Once again, I'll put the link to that um, up on the finnyhacks.com site.